I believe we are the first country which will be introducing regulations for token sales and ICOs. Uh, others have taken different approaches. Some have simply banned them. Some have treated them as securities like the US. And really there are a number of options. You can ignore them and pretend they're not there. You can ban them. Or what we believe is the right way to do it is to regulate them and to bring them into a regulatory space where we can, can control the activity to ensure that consumers, customers of these token sales, have a minimum level of protection. And the bulk of what we're doing and why we're doing it is to provide consumer protection and also protection for our reputation as a jurisdiction. Uh, there is a lot of risk uh, in these token sales and we believe that people that put money into them should have a complete and transparent disclosure of everything to do with the scheme. Uh, that there should be a degree of corporate governance, that there should be uh, all the issues that we're very familiar with in financial services replicating in this space without stifling innovation. I think that's a critical aspect of regulating this space, that we must encourage innovation but provide some comfort to the consumers. Now, how are you going to do that? Because obviously it hasn't been done before. If you consider what a, a, an IPO is, uh, initial public offering on, for example, the UK Stock Exchange, uh, the elements of disclosure are crucial and critical to the flotation or, or, or the sale of those shares. In the ICO space, we have what's called a white paper, which is what the firms issue, which is very light in most cases on the detail of what should be disclosed and the transparency levels that are required of them. Because today there is nothing required of them because it's unregulated. So we're going to be seeking to introduce uh, degrees of transparency to the process so that proper disclosure is made and people take responsibility for what they say and then afterwards they have to commit to doing what they said they were going to do and not go outside that space. So the whole basis is trying to provide the consumer with full information, full disclosure, full transparency and with the regulatory regime that we will impose, for example authorised sponsors, we're going to be introducing a regime of authorised sponsors which means a local firm will be authorised by the Financial Services Commission to deal with these ICOs and it is their responsibility to ensure that the flotation or the token sale uh, complies fully with the Gibraltar regulations. Some countries have banned ICOs, some people have ignored them completely. Are you not concerned that by regulating or perhaps uh, over-regulating that you might put some companies off from coming here? Absolutely. I think over-regulation is a problem and that's why I said before that we've got to introduce regulation in a way that doesn't stifle innovation. But there were billions of pounds paid last year in 2017 into these token sales. So the space needs to be regulated. And so if we lose some that don't want the regulatory certainty the umbrella that we provide, that's not an issue. Uh, we want the quality token sales to come through and from Gibraltar. Uh, and that is the market that we're seeking. And we believe they will want to be in the regulated space because it will provide their consumers uh, with a better framework within which to work and more customer security in terms of they will know that if it's a Gibraltar ICO, it is regulated, it's better protected and you've got a better chance in what is a very risky uh, and new world. The Financial Conduct Authority in the UK attaches a, a warning or a disclaimer to ICOs. Do you propose to do the same over here? Every single ICO will have to have a, a public warning of the risks, which is why I talk about transparency and disclosure. All the warnings have to be very clearly stipulated. So, for example, the bulk of these ICOs relate to software development and technology. The technology at the end of the process may not work. So people have to be told when you're putting money in, this is at a very early stage of development, the actual finished product may not work, in which case your token sale may be worthless. These are the sort of things that we will deal with in the regulations to ensure that consumers that buy into them are fully aware and go into the investment in the full knowledge of what it entails. How big do you see this growing? If you just follow Gibraltar Finance on Twitter um, and you see the retweets that they do of, or we do, of all the commentary that is going out in this space around the world on what we are doing on ICO regulation and what we did previously on DLT, it is mind-blowing to see the amount of coverage you're getting around the world and the amount of excitement. Um, during my visit in Davos, uh, I met a number of people from the crypto world, European parliamentarians, officials from Davos, from, from the European Commission in Brussels, and they are extremely interested and very much like that we are leading in this space in a sensible and, and pragmatic way without stifling innovation. So the amount of publicity and interest that we are uh, uh, creating uh, is absolutely mind-blowing. It is quite incredible the amount of coverage you're getting all over the world. From every corner, everyone is looking at blockchain, everyone is looking at the DLT space, and token sales are part and parcel of that. So it's right 
to protect consumers that we should move into this space and also get the incredible interest that we're getting from, from really all over the world. And if you speak to any of our law firms in Gibraltar, they will tell you that they are drowning in inquiries from firms wanting to take part in this space and wanting to see what they can do from Gibraltar, which is great for long-term sustainable quality business, which is what we're seeking to attract.